What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I wanna show you how to use frames with Kinter and Python. All right guys, in the last video, we created a status bar for our app. In this video, I want to change focus a little bit, show you another widget that Kinter uses, the frame. But before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so I've got a new file open and I've just got the same sort of standard code that all of our projects start with. And let's go up here and save it as what? How about frame.py? Just frame. Okay, so frame.py. Now, what we want to do is create a frame. And a frame is just what it sounds like. It's a little like box, has a border. You can have a label on it or not. And it's just, it's sort of used to just keep things organized in your app. So you might have different sections that you want to sort of put together visually. And a frame is a good way to do that. So frames are really easy to create. It's just a widget like all the other widgets. And we create it mostly the same way that we create other widgets. So I'm just gonna call this frame. You can call it anything you want. And it's called, the actual term is a label frame, right? So we want this in root. And let's say we want the text to equal, this is my frame, I don't know, right? Now we can also give this some padding. Let's go pad X equals five and pad Y equals five. And we'll play around with these paddings in a minute to show you exactly what they do. So now we wanna put this on the screen. So let's go frame and let's just pack this in real quick here. And let's give this some padding. So pad X equals, let's say 10 and pad Y equals 10. And we'll see sort of exactly what this does with the padding why this is 10 and this is five in a little bit. Once we get this thing built, we play around with it a little bit. So let's see if we save this, I don't think this will actually do anything because we haven't put anything in the frame yet, but we can run this to see. Let's go Python. Notice I'm in my C forward slash GUI directory where we've been saving all our files so far. And let's call this frame.py, run it. Yeah, so let me pull this over. It doesn't really do anything yet because we haven't put anything in the frame. So that's the next thing that we want to do. So we can do anything we want. I mean, we can put anything inside of this we want. Just for purposes of showing you how to do this, I'm just going to create a simple button. I'm going to call it B. <laughs> so button, this is a button widget. We've done this a zillion times already. So we want not, now normally we would say put this in root, right? Our root container. But now we don't want it in root. We want it in frame which is this thing right here. We, we're saying put this in the frame, right? So other, other than that, it's basically the same. We could just go text equals um, don't click here, right? Uh, and then like any time we want to add this to a thing, we could just pack this in there. Okay, so let's save this. Come back here and run this guy. And here we go. Oops, drag this over. Here we see this is my frame and inside of it is a button that says don't click here. The button doesn't do anything because we didn't tell it to do anything. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So notice this frame. That's kind of cool. So let's close this and run it one more time. Now let's play around with this. Remember we had different paddings, pad X and pad Y for the, the frame itself. And then when we packed it, we, we gave it some padding. So look at this. Let's pull up the code again. And let's pull this up here. So you'll notice when we packed it, when we packed the frame, whoops, disappeared. We gave it 10 and 10 for pad X and pad Y. And we've done pad X and pad Y before. It pads on the X axis and the Y axis. And you notice that's on the outside here because this is 10. On the inside, we put five and you can see that's like that. So let's, let's play around with this. Let's go pad X 100 and pad Y 
100 to really make this dramatic. So let's save this, come back here and run it again. And you'll notice, boom, you have padding X and Y uh, as 100. So this, you know, packs it inside of the, the outside container here, right? So that's interesting. Or we could do the opposite, put that back. And let's say, oh, pad X and pad Y inside of, let's just say 50. Run this again. It's a little better. Now we've put some padding inside of the frame. So that's really all you have to keep in mind with this padding. When you create it, remember when we create any widgets, it's always a two-step process. We create the widget and then we put it on the screen. So in this one, we created the widget. And when we do that, when we give that thing padding, that goes inside of the frame. And then here we put it on the screen and that pad X and pad Y goes outside of the frame. So I'm just sort of keep that in mind. Now, the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to this, and this is kind of weird, right? So check this out. Normally, we just pack things when, uh, you know, we don't care, right? Otherwise, we use a grid and then we position things. The thing about pack and grid is you can't do them both. You can either do pack and pack or grid and grid. So you notice here we did pack here and pack here. Well, with a frame, that's not necessarily true anymore. You can do a grid inside the frame. So for instance, we can go grid row equals zero, column equals zero. If we save this, now normally we would get an error if we did this, but now we pull this over and boom, it works. Now it's positioned in the same spot because there isn't another thing in there, but we can create another button to show you just to prove one last time. So we could go, I don't know, B2. And I'm just going to copy this whole thing. And right, or here, don't click here or here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so B2 dot grid, we want row equals one and column equals one. So we want it down and over, right? So if we save this, run it. Boom, you see, sure enough, we can play around with the grid system inside this frame, even though for the frame itself, we packed it. Very cool, very interesting, something to definitely keep in mind. Now, one last thing, I said that that was the last thing, but we have one actual other last thing, and that's this little label right here. This is my frame. We can actually get rid of that as well. It's right here. Remove it completely, and if we do that and save it, We get this kind of a cleaner look, right? Very cool. So think of frames, use them all that you're probably going to use them all the time. I mean, there's always times when you have different sections of your screen that you want to sort of keep separate. You might have all the, the buttons on this side in a frame and all the form things on this side in a frame. And then you might have another frame where there's images or who knows what, but sort of separating things out visually is always a good idea. And uh, that's how you do it with frames. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.